Hi everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well this evening. Um, I thought I'd come on and make a quick video. I don't know how quick this is going to be. So it may be a little all over the place. I'm going to try to to focus and make this um, uh, coherent. You know, I was thinking back about, um, you know, what I think about when I think about control. You know, control can be can affect us in so many different ways. Control over our thoughts, our minds, our feelings, what we do, what we eat, what we wear. And you know, I was just thinking about just growing up as a, a JW kid in my house and how things were. I'm not sure if I said it in a video before, I may have. Um, the household I grew up in, I never really had the problem or the issue of, of being like in poverty or, you know, not having enough to eat, not having nice clothes, you know, poor as all of the outside looking in stuff, you know, I always had the nicest clothes, I always had the nicest things, you know, my parents always did give me, you know, material things in that sense, um, as long as, you know, they felt like the Watchtower Bible Track Society approved of it, you know, I could go ahead and, um, I could, could get it. But it was interesting, I was, I was thinking about, you know, the level of control that my parents had over myself and my siblings. Um, and I know some people are going to say, well, you know, they're your parents. They're supposed to have somewhat of control over what you do. And, you know, I would definitely agree with that to a certain extent. But I also remember how, and I've said this in videos before too, um, my sister and I were dragged in front of the the elders all the time. I mean, all of the time, no matter what we did. I mean, our parents would just bombard us with, you know, if you didn't, you never knew when it was coming. You would be going along feeling like you were doing what your parents told you to do. And maybe three weeks ago, maybe you talked back or said something snappish, you know, kind of back to your parents. And all of a sudden you think you're going for ice cream and you turn into the kingdom hall and you're like oh my god what what is going on here and you get to go in the back door into a building with no windows into a room that your back is against the wall and the elders and your parents are pretty much on the other side and then it begins. It's just, then they just go in on you. Telling you how horrible you are and how terrible you are as a person and that Jehovah doesn't like you and, you know, he's going to destroy you if you continue and disobeying your parents because the Bible specifically says disobedient. You should not be disobedient to your parents for any reason. Um, That's just... I mean, I thought about that today, and I was just like, wow. You know, and I thought about that Caleb video, you know. The video, video talking about obey and be blessed, you know. How much obedience is necessary? Like, what exactly is necessary? Even when your parents put you into harm's way, it's still necessary for you to be obedient. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, and for those of you who have never been in front of a judiciary type hearing in the elders, as a child, it's way more intimidating than it is as an adult. I've never, I would have to assume I've never been in front of them as an adult. But as a child and as a teenager, yes, multiple, multiple, multiple times. And not for any of the reasons you would think. Not for, um, like I said, for not making my bed, for not responding quickly enough, for not washing the dishes in a quick enough manner. You know, it was almost as if, like I said, we were in some type of weird POW camp where my parents were there with us, but they would sacrifice us daily to these people. They would, to get brownie points with these people, 
they would bring us before them and let us get emotionally just abused. I mean, these conversations were awful. They were awful. I just remember crying to the point of being dehydrated, basically. Just, and you never knew why. You never understood why. You were never good enough. You can never be good enough. And it was interesting. I thought about how my parents would discipline us sometimes. One of the things that they did was they would take away, I remember my mother told me that she wanted, she took away everything that I had personally owned, which would be anything that she purchased. So there would be clothes, shoes, anything. I couldn't wear it. I would come in my room, all my stuff would be gone. The only things that would be left behind would be a couple of items, maybe that one of my grandparents or aunts or uncles may have sent me. And until I came around to her point of view, I wouldn't be able to get anything back. So, you know, once I came back to her point of view, then everything was copacetic. Everything was good. Everything was good. Don't quite understand that. Don't quite get that. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I don't understand it. Um, my mom is still inside. And I wish one day that she wouldn't still be a part of this organization um one of my siblings made the decision that her children couldn't be exposed to her because she would not agree to not take them to the kingdom hall when she would babysit them and that's definitely always caused a rift but my sister did the right thing she did the right thing is her her children have grown up knowing what what real love is as opposed to conditional love. Everything was based on a condition. You have to do this or you're not, you know, you're not going to get that or you're not going to be loved or you know you know the Washtenaw Bible Track Society the, the the way that they present things to parents and and their their um followers they take those that information and based on their educational backgrounds and their personal experience they expose their kids to things and I, i'm pretty sure there's a lot of parents that are out there that are xj dubs too um i, I wonder you know how you feel about the whole idea of your their exposure to the jehovah's witnesses you know that's just i know it's a, i'm not a parent but i could, could imagine you would feel very bad that you know, maybe these things may have affected your child negatively as opposed to positively. And I also remember when I was probably in between the ages of probably 12 and 15, you know, at school, it was boys at school that, you know, liked me or wanted to get to know me better. And I remember a, a guy wrote me this beautiful poem. It was so, it was just such a sweet poem. And I thought it was the coolest thing. And it was about me and it was, it was cool. You know, I had a moment of distinction, a moment where someone was really concerned or, or cared about who I was as a person. But I knew if my parents ever found that, I would be back before the elders on some type of fornication slash charge of something. Even though nothing happened, it was just a poem. Um, his perception of who I was, or who I was at the time. I remember taking that and hiding it in my shoe to get it home. And then taking it and hiding it inside one of my doll heads. and um, any Or inside a doll's leg. Um, I would even go so far sometimes to hide things in in my garbage um, and rotate their locations because I knew my room was tossed often, often. It was gone through often. So it was, like I said, it was like living in prison. Your cell was tossed. You never knew when it was going to happen. And then if something was found, then you were taken before the elders. And it could be the smallest thing. It could be a toy or a card or something that a friend gave you, you know, at school. Um, so... I don't know, I just, I don't know, I, I just think that Jehovah's Witness parents should really think and look at this organization a little closer and 
think and see if they're really allowing them to love their children as they should. I also remember that my mom would um tell me she was 99% right all the time. So I used to tell her, I was like, well, wow, God is perfect. If you're 99% right, you're like right up there with him. She would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder how she feels about the Washtar Bible Track Society taking her position next to God now. Now she's only above Jesus. So I don't know. Anyway, that's all I have for tonight. Thanks.